Yo, hey there, Pixel Pushers. Have you ever been confused by how to deploy objects on Kubernetes? Well, let me take that confusion away in this video. We're going to be covering the basics of Kubernetes deployment, and by the end of this video, you should know everything you need to know to get started. My name's Jameson. Let's go ahead and dive in. Think of Kubernetes sort of as a traffic cop that directs the flow of containers on the cloud. Just like a traffic cop ensures that cars are moving safely and efficiently on the road, Kubernetes kind of ensures that containers are deployed and managed smoothly on the cloud. And just like a traffic cop can redirect traffic in the event of an accident, Kubernetes can automatically handle failures and reroute traffic to healthy containers. So how do we actually deploy on Kubernetes? To do so, we're going to need to follow a couple steps. The very first thing we're going to need to do is create a deployment object. Next, we're going to define our YAML file. And within our YAML file, we're going to define a few things. We're going to define the name of our deployment, our Docker image, and the number of replicas that we want to create as well as any other relevant settings. After we have our YAML file configured, we're going to use our kubectl CLI to deploy our application to a cluster. OK, guys. So for our example today, what I'd like to show you is an easy way to deploy and manage our Kubernetes uh, objects. And how we're going to do this is by using the Kubernetes extension on Virtual Studio Code. And I'm going to show you some easy tricks and tips on how to use it and navigate it. To start, you can actually install this extension very easily by going to your extensions if you're on Virtual Studio Code, and then just typing in Kubernetes. And it should be the very first option by Microsoft. And there are plenty of other extensions, but that is pretty much the main one you should be looking for. okay i'm going to go ahead and go back to these files and if we go ahead and go to week five we'll see here i actually already have a yaml file spun up for us so what a yaml file is is pretty much a way of defining our kubernetes resources in one easy to deploy file uh, which is what we always want as programmers so what we're doing here, I'll go ahead and break it down for you and just kind of explain it piece by piece. We'll go ahead and then deploy our uh, resources and then uh, we'll see how we can manage them. So to start off, you'll see here this API version just off the top of our head, common sense. We can kind of just say API versions, just kind of the version we're working with. When we go down here to kind, this is just kind of defining what we're, what kind of resource or Kubernetes object that we kind of want to deploy. Uh, here, I'm deploying what's called a deployment. Um, and then if we go down further, we'll see here uh, for the metadata for my deployment, I have a name defined. If we go down here, we have something called a spec, which is going to be our specification of our deployment. And it's going to be uh, kind of a reoccurring theme to see a spec. The spec's just kind of going to be your specifications for your object. So here for my deployment, I'm just specifying I'd like three replicas or three pods or three versions of this pod. Um, and it's going to pretty much be searching for these pods, which th with this label set, which is going to be app. And I labeled it jams one app just for simplicity's sake. Next, if we go down, you'll see that I have a template defined here. And that template's just going to be defining another label. For my web app and then if we go down even further i have a, another spec defined it looks like i have a spec defined within a spec so what's going on here uh so just very easily this second spec is actually defining the uh containers that are going to be running uh within this deployment or even uh better this is actually defining the uh specifications for the pod here, here's my container, and here are the containers within that pod. 
I'm naming that container Tim's Web App Container. I'm gonna have to go ahead and use the Apache HTTPD Docker image. And I'm also defining that I'd like to forward port 80 on uh, this pod, or well, my container port 80. Next up, if we go down here, we'll see that we have something else called a service defined. So another cool feature of Kubernetes is that when I'm deploying, uh, is that when you deploy this file, you can actually deploy multiple resources at the same time, as long as you have, have this little separator here. This will just uh, notate that, hey, these are two separate objects for Kubernetes, uh, but I want a deployment, I can deploy them at the same time. They're gonna be deployed within the same file uh, and I can just specify them uh, separately by uh, denoting this. So next, if we go down here, we'll see metadata. Uh, again, just pretty much kind of same stuff going up here. Uh, just defining a name for my service, giving it a label, Jams Web App, just like the rest of it. And then down here, I'm just specifying that uh, the target port on the pod 80 is forwarding to port 8080 to the service. And I'll explain uh, a little bit more of that later. Okay. Now that I've gone, uh, gone ahead and broken down this YAML file, what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and deploy. And how we would do that is if I open up my terminal, what I can do is if I type in Q control, apply, and let's go ahead and do a hop. I scroll up, let's see what cube control apply does. So this will allow me to apply a configuration to a resource by file name or STDN. Now, what does that mean? That just means that I can go ahead and specify a file like down here, be it a JSON or YAML file, and Kubernetes will go ahead and just pick up on whatever I'm specifying in this file and deploy it. So what all, all I actually have to do is go clear this up. If I run a cube control apply and give it the F flag to specify that I want to pass it a file. And then I just need to specify it's going to be this web app deployment YAML file. And then I can just go ahead and enter. And looks like my resources have been deployed. So how can I actually check that my Kubernetes resources have been deployed? Now, one useful feature of this Kubernetes extension is going to be if you go ahead and click on this badge here to the left, you'll see a bunch of different Kubernetes objects listed here, like namespaces, your nodes, your workloads, storage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you can feel free to go through these on your own time, but these are pretty much just gonna correspond to your normal uh, Kubernetes objects. So for example, your namespaces are just gonna correspond to your Kubernetes namespaces. As you can tell, I have my default namespace and all of the other uh, cube namespaces that come with, Kuber uh, with Kubernetes. Next, I have my nodes. Uh, here, I only have my one node running, which is my mini cube node. And down here, I have a whole bunch of different stuff running on there. Uh, I could go ahead and poke through these if I wanted to. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff uh, it actually enables you to do. If I wanted to, I can right click, give me a bunch of different options. I can load this. So doing a load, we'll just go ahead and generate a um, metadata YAML file just containing all of the information related to this pod or sorry, uh, rather this, uh, yeah, actually this is a pod running on the node because it specifies it right there in the YAML file. So that's all the information I can just go ahead and pull just by using that command very easily, very simply. Uh, if I wanted to, I can just copy the name. This will run a git command for me. Here we can see it'll pull uh, all the information related to this pod. If I go down here, even more things that I can do. I can run a describe command on this. It'll print, uh, well, it will go ahead and create this describe file. 
with all the information. If I wanted to get the logs, logs are simply uh, available. All you have to do is go here. It'll open up this little terminal here. Uh, if you want, you can specify different things that you want to search for within your logs, uh, such as some keywords, some uh, if you'd like to follow the logs, uh, if there's some sort of timing that you'd like, some sort of filter. Uh, it, it's very flexible, which is really nice, uh, but I'll just go ahead and keep default settings and see what happens. And you'll see here it pulls that, uh, it pulls the logs for that, uh, for that pod for me. So we can go ahead and actually close that. We can close that. Let's go back to our main, uh, topic at hand though. I deployed this web app and I want to make sure that I have the service running and I have my deployment running. And I want to make sure that I have all three of my replicas running as well. So if I go back down here, what I would have to do is go down here to my workloads. And I know that I have a deployment. So let me go ahead and check my deployments and see what's going on there. And it looks like there is something down here in my deployments. I can describe it just by clicking that little eye. And you'll see here, here was my created web apps deployment. If I wanted to pull more information on that. Oh, and here, all three of my pods. And I can just expand that and it'll tell me even more information. I'll see here that this is currently in a running state. Here's its IP address. If I wanted to grab more information, I could right click and just like before, I can get information on that pod if I wanted to. I could do a load get that metadata information if i wanted to as well i could go down here to pods oh or not another thing that i wanted to check i also wanted to make sure that that service was deployed so if i go down here to network service and we'll see here here is my jams web app service i could pretty much do almost the same thing i could do a load Grab that information. I could do a port forward, which is also very interesting, which would allow me to actually port forward port 8080 of that uh, service to port 8080 of my computer, which is useful for testing pods, but we'll save that for a different lesson. And then same thing, I could pull some information on those pods. The very last thing I'd like to leave you with is a very powerful feature, which I kind of neglected on purpose. So if I right click here, the very first, uh, uh, well, very third option at the top here gives me a convert to template. So if you click on that, what uh, this will actually do for you is first it'll prompt you for a chart. Uh, if you don't know what the chart is, you can just put in YAML and it'll go ahead and just make you uh, a YAML file output. And now if I go ahead and name this, let's say web app template. I'll see here that it actually produces a Kubernetes YAML file that I'm able to deploy with all the same specifications that are defined within my pod. So this is another useful feature if you ever want to grab the um, current state of a pod and deploy it later, or you just want to get some more information on the metadata. We'll go ahead and stop here for today. Okay, so to recap, deploying applications on Kubernetes involves creating a deployment object using the kubes control command line tool or the kube cuddle command line tool to deploy the application to a cluster and monitoring the deployment to ensure everything is running smoothly. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or topics that you'd like me to cover, just let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.